Hey, good morning. Good morning. We're doing English, yes. We're doing English. Yes. Hey, how are you doing? How are you doing, Ruth? I'm doing fine. How about you? Good, good. Thank you. Thank you for, for joining. Very early in your morning, yeah? Very early in my morning, but it's okay. <laughs> so it's okay. So how about you? Did you have a good day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still midday. It's two o'clock here. Two o'clock, that's right. So you are yeah. in Sweden, correct? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining. I know you, you have a busy schedule and I really appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm guessing that you you have it too. Yeah, it has been busy. So but it's <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, we, we do the best we can. <laughs> it's part of the business. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Ruth, um, again, thank you very much for joining. Before we get started, why don't you tell us more about yourself and a little more about your background. Tell us more about Power BI. I know Power BI is your passion. I'm pretty sure the audience is intrigued about your background and everything. So please go ahead and yeah. tell us more about yourself. Yes, so I was born in Spain, mm -hmm. in the north of Spain, by, by the coast, beautiful place. And uh, study mechanical engineer. So I don't come from the IT world. That's more from the business side of it. Um, was studying in Wales for a while, and then I moved to Sweden. And I've been here since then. And I started with Power BI because I always loved data. And I thought it was a wonderful tool to, for, you know, Excel is also a wonderful tool to, to do data analysis. But the issue that I was having was that it was crashing all the time. My data was too big, right? So the exactly. only thing I had, it was like, you know, professional IT tools. There was nothing for me as a business user to work with until Power BI. So I started working with it. I fell in love and I said, okay, let's do this as a, for life, you know, not for life, exactly. perhaps, but, you know, to make a living. Exactly. Now, that's definitely a, a good story. And I know Excel, you know, it has a limit over a million, a million rows and it's a headache when you're dealing with a lot of data. So totally understandable. Yeah. I mean, I didn't have the one million rows because I installed the power pivot thing mm -hmm. in Excel. So it allowed you to have a ton more. Exactly. That was not the issue. And I could actually read all the, t all the rows. It wasn't like big data. It was just bigger data. Mm -hmm. But it was crashing anyway, you know, there was a memory limit and when it hit that, it just Excel crashed and then I had to start all over again. <laughs> so yeah, it was like, oh my God, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah, that's definitely not fun. So why don't you tell us more about your channel, your name? I'm very, I don't think we discuss about your channel's name. Curveball. Oh. Is, that, is that the right name? <laughs> it's a curveball. Curveball, you, yeah. <laughs> Tell us more about that, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was one of the most asked questions before. <laughs> like, what is the meaning of Kerbal? You know, when you Google Kerbal, uh -huh. I don't know if it is still, but it was before. So I actually made a video about it. Um, it's a very silly story, but, you know, I started, when I started the company, I called it Intelcube oh. and uh, registered the name in the Swedish patent office. And uh, soon after, <laughs> Intel called, well, lawyers <laughs> sent me a, a letter. Oh, they returned to you right away. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. When it was like, I don't know, weeks. So the, the Swedish patent office said, yes, you can have the name. Uh -huh. and after that, it was, it was like weeks after that, then, you know, Intel lawyers just start bugging me exactly. <laughs> like, no you yeah. cannot have we're going to contest the you know the decision from the patent office so uh, we were back and forth for a few months and uh, but, oh, it, it was such a you know they, they have like they send you this thick document that is written in like you know 
lawyer language. Oh yeah, it's tough. <laughs> I was supposed to read it and understand. Obviously, I was not going to hire a lawyer for that. It didn't make any sense. So I was trying to read myself. I will send the notes back and tell them what I thought, why I shared, had the name. And the Swedish patent office was with me for a while, but after a while they said like, oh, you have to change your name. <laughs> yeah, change your name. We're not fighting Intel for you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, so then, you know, I had been running Intel Cube for probably, I don't remember, less than a year, but still, you know, you have a website, you do posts, mm -hmm. and everything says everywhere, Intel Cube, it's like, oh my God, it's going to be a <laughs> time exactly. and change everything. So I was walking home, I was a little bit disappointed and a bit worried, and, you know, I was still doing my normal nine to five job. This was a side job. Mm -hmm. So, like, oh my God, that was a huge curveball, you know, curveball. Oh, there you go. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, <laughs> maybe, maybe I can call the company. You know, I check if there was curveball was taken dot com, and uh -huh. it was. So I said maybe phonetically I can use it. Uh -huh. and, and that's how, that's how it came about. Yeah, no, that's that's an awesome story. It's, it's absolutely crazy, but yes, I can laugh now, but it was a lot of work. It was so much work. You have to change the email. You have to change. Yeah. And I, I wasn't very good at web back then. So all the, you know, all the links you have to do every direct. Mm -hmm. and I, I was just reading at night instead of doing what I was supposed to do. It was promote my company. I was just doing administration exactly. for quite a long time, actually. It took quite a long Oh yeah, definitely because you have to change emails, website, everything. and also expenses. Yeah, yeah, business cards and uh, exactly. everything. It was like, oh. <laughs> but yeah, I think I like it now. The name. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. It's a nice name. <laughs> yeah Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. I think there is a little bit of background. Maybe you have a. You have a, your a YouTube channel on maybe. Or maybe just me. No, I don't. Should I have <laughs> like, headphones? Like. Not sure if I have them. Should I try headphones? Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. In the meantime, I'm gonna share the screen, folks, for you who are there. Uh, let's see. Okay. Let's see. How did you get into Power BI? Oh, Power BI. I actually get started with Tableau back in 2017 because uh, one of my classes when I was doing graduate school, uh, they we had a data related class and say, hey, you guys need to work on with this tool called Tableau. And I always actually loved data in the past because I, I also have a engineering background like yourself and data was huge. But in 2017, my professor said, hey, you guys need to learn this tool. And that's when I said, hey, this tool is awesome. And I started playing with Tableau, the free tool, which was Tableau Public at that time. Mm -hmm. But then back in 2019, I started playing with Power BI. So fairly new. But I love the tool. It's very flexible. And also you have the free version. You can just play with everything there. So love that. This is not a very political right question to ask, but which one do you prefer to blow or Power BI? Oh, that's a tough question. <laughs> uh, since I'm using more Power BI, I would say Power BI. But I definitely know that Tableau also is a very powerful tool. Power BI has really good uh, visuals as well. What I find a little bit challenging is DAX, and that's the reason we are here. <laughs> <laughs> good introduction. <laughs> yeah, yes. OK, so let's go over the agenda real quick, and then we can go from there. Yes. So we have five different points that we're going to be talking about today. We have an introduction. That's what we just uh, did. We're going to talk about Welcome to DAX, why is DAX with why is DAX really interesting? Uh, we will give the audience also the opportunity to ask questions, Q&A. 
we're going to talk about your educational platforms as well. And in the end, we will just have our final thoughts about this session. How about that? Perfect. Sounds okay. perfect. Awesome. Uh, we already talked about yourself. Thank you again for sharing your, your story. And now let's get started with this fun topic. So what is DAX? <laughs> I know, like I said, DAX is a little bit tricky for some of, us, some of us. It might not be tricky for others, but for most of us, I would say it's a little bit tricky. In your experience, what is DAX? Yeah, so DAX is a, a language you can use to query data quickly, mm -hmm. fast, and to query, like do any query you like. So the benefits of learning DAX is that you will be able to ask your data absolutely any question without having to create a million you know, supporting tables like you do, for example, in Excel. Obviously, you can calculate anything in Excel too, but you see those those Excel files get like super big because you have to have like supporting tables for different aggregations and things like that. So it, DAX is extremely, extremely powerful, but it's difficult to learn, mm -hmm. I would say. Yeah, I'm one I, of the ones that think that DAX is difficult. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah, you just have to think differently, you know, and it depends if you come from Excel. I'm not sure how it is, actually, if you come from a from an IT background, for example, if you have a skill uh, knowledge, if that would help you, I, I really don't know. But from an Excel perspective, you just have to forget everything that you know and think completely different. And I think that is the challenge. You don't have, you don't work with rows, you don't work with cells, you work with columns, mm -hmm. you work with tables. And there is a mental shift that has to happen in order for you to be able to understand DAX. So, um, yeah, it's, the, the funny thing for me is always that the difficult things are easy in DAX. So things that in Excel are super complex are very <laughs> easy with DAX, mm -hmm. but easy things are very complex in DAX. They're like, exactly. oh my God, like, oh, how, what? Why, for example, you know, this Greg, Greg that has a campaign about the, the, the grand totals that never return whatever you want. Uh -huh. That's one thing. Do you have a table and then you imagine that, okay, what you see above gets sum on this, on the total sum, on the grand total, but it doesn't mm -hmm. work like that. And you have to understand that in order to, you know, be able to fix it. <laughs> there yes. are a lot of gotchas with DAX that you need to know. And it comes with experience and time. Exactly. Yeah, DAX is, well, I, when I started playing with Power BI and then I learned about this programming language and I was very impressed because I just created a measure and then boom, you just start playing with the, with the visuals, you know, creating these uh, context filters and then you have the results. But then suddenly you change another filter and then the result is totally different. Maybe something really, really unexpected. Say, what is going on with this tool? So it's really frustrating sometimes. But to your point, it demands a lot of patience because you have to be patient. And also you have to learn the, the basics, in my opinion. If you don't know the basics, I mean, you, you will get lost easily. You know, but it's difficult to learn the basics if you don't if you don't have anything to apply it to. Like if you read about context transition, it's not going mm -hmm. to tell you anything until you actually do it. Do it. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think you need both. Mm -hmm. You need to practice what you read. And for me, the biggest the best way to learn is to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. So when DAX is giving you something that you're not expected, try to understand why, what, mm -hmm. what is calculating. And if you understand how it calculated the result that was unexpected, then you just gain so much knowledge. And it doesn't come from a particular book or a particular, it's just that you just learn it because and you need it. So you will be determined to understand what, what's going on right it's not like exactly. if you're doing a course that everything is 
perfectly laid out and prepared for you. Life doesn't work that way on data, never that way. Yeah, definitely agree with that one. Because, I mean, you can read a lot of books, but if you don't understand how it works, it's going to be just in your head. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to put it into action. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, yeah. That. And the... you know, sometimes you just copy paste DAX mm -hmm. queries and you think, oh, I understand it because I know what I was trying to do. But mm -hmm. as you say, you put something else in there and then suddenly it doesn't work. And you realize that you didn't understand how the measure actually worked. Mm -hmm. And it's again by making a mistake that you say, like, oh, why is it happening? Mm -hmm. So it's a combination of both, I would say. You can't just, well, there's people that actually learn very well just by reading and seeing others do. So it depends mm -hmm. on who you are too. Yeah, it depends also. It depends on your background, I believe. Some people are more abstract learning. They have that skill. So yeah. definitely get it quickly just yeah, by yeah. reading. Exactly. OK, so let's see. There is another question here. Uh, let's see. How different is DAX from other programming language? Well, uh, I, I'm learning Python now. It is the only programming language I know. I don't know if M counts as a programming language. Don't know. If it does, I know M, but yeah. But it's completely different than anything now. Again, I'm probably not the best person because I'm not a programmer. <laughs> but, but I. It's just that everything happens in the background with that. Mm -hmm. Everything happens behind the scenes. The, the T was, you know, when you're doing a filter, when you're doing a summarize, when you're doing all this type of stuff, DAX is created, or the engine is creating tables in the background that is using to do the calculations, and you don't see them. So you have to all the time imagine what things are being created in order to do something. Which are the programming language that's that. I don't know. Maybe SQL is the same. But I find that people say that SQL is easier to understand. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Do you know SQL? No, no. I heard about that, but I'm not, I'm not familiar with, with that one. Yeah, no. One of the things that I really like with Python, for example, is that it happens also that when you're doing, for example, Pandas is like Power Query for Python. So when you're doing that, you have a possibility when you're looping things and creating tables, you have opportunity to see them. Mm -hmm. So you can see the intermediate table that is going to be fed mm -hmm. into something else before it does. So if something is wrong, you can actually say, oh, I have too many columns, too little columns. I'm missing a column. You know what I mean? Or, or I have mm -hmm. like duplicates or you can actually see what you're working on. And I think exactly. that's actually very, very powerful. You know, they released now this evaluate and log uh, measures in DAX uh -huh. that allow you to do just that, just to be able to see the intermediate tables that are created while you're doing a DAX calculation. And I think it's absolutely brilliant. So everybody should actually check it if you are serious with DAX. There is a problem and this that you need to install a third party tool, which is completely free. But, you know, it's not very agile work if you have to go to another tool, export it there, check it out, and then come mm -hmm. back, and then you change something, and then you have to export it. So it would be better if you could check those intermediate tables in Power BI desktop directly. Yeah, that would be awesome, ideally, right? Hopefully soon. We'll see. Yeah, let's, let's see what they have. Definitely. So yeah, DAX, DAX is, is definitely so all the all the work that's happening, you cannot see it. Like you said, it's behind the scenes, and you don't know how you can fix it until you see the result. Hey, the result is not correct. Exactly. I need to understand what's going on. But then, it's compared to other languages, like you said, SQL, for example, I use I use SQL as well. You can see you can see the code. You can see everything there. So it's it's easy to debug sometimes when something is not correct. And then Python, I haven't learned Python, so it's on my list. It should be interesting to learn Python as well. Very, very powerful, very, very powerful language to learn. And the thing with 
in Python and C goes, you know, you can do automation, you can do, I'm, for example, now generating my YouTube thumbnails for the Python series mm -hmm. with Python. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah, so you can do image creation, you can do automation for social media, you can do machine learning, you guys, you, you can send emails, you can, uh, anything, you, you can do anything. Like, oh man, I, I'm missing one. I need yeah, to. It's, it's fantastic. It's really, really cool because, you know, it goes beyond just managing data. It is just uh, like power automate together with, you know, put all the power tools and that's Python, but just uh -huh. one language, you know? <laughs> so it's super, super cool. Yeah, definitely. I need to, I need to look into that one. I, I've heard a lot about Python, but since I've been just focused on Power BI, I said, hey, I'm going to learn Power BI first. Dax yeah. first, but I know Dax is going to take a while. <laughs> hey, well, it's going to be always a learning thing, you know, because they are developing the language. Mm -hmm. You will always be learning Dax. So if you wait until you know Dax, you yeah. might wait too long. Exactly. <laughs> you get too old. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it, when you feel confident that you can, you know, manage the calculations that you need in a normal amount of time, whatever exactly. is normal for you and that, then maybe it's a good idea to, if you want to, you know, to expand your skill set with other, other languages. Programs. Yeah. It could be R also. It doesn't have to be just Python. Uh, so, you know, the R is more data analysis only. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, I've Python, about... you have a bigger, yeah. Yeah, I heard about R as well, so. They are on my list. <laughs> <laughs> next, next, next. Probably in a few months, I will start learning Python. So thank you. Thank you for sharing your, your experience. Yeah, yeah, do it. It's so cool. It's just crazy. And it's easy to learn. Aha, uh -huh, I like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I've been doing it for three, no, 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 three months now. Now it would probably be five months. And it's just so easy to learn. Just, and there's like millions of resources like Power BI, so it's not a new thing. I mean, you will mm -hmm. get help everywhere. Exactly. Really? Yeah, I need to check your videos. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Okay, so let's go with the next question. Yes. Now let's see what we have here. <laughs> Why is that sometimes <laughs> easy and other times hard to learn? <laughs> um. When is tax easy? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just with basic, I guess, calculations. <laughs> but seriously, like, even if you do a sum, you can do it wrong. Mm -hmm. If the context is different, yeah, definitely. You will get yeah. something totally <laughs> so, different. I'm not sure exactly when tax is easy. It's just uh, different. It's, it's hard. I mean, it's fun. I think to be fair, like DAX is fun because it's like it's a puzzle. I always like to solve puzzles, and DAX is a puzzle. Mm -hmm. So you have to figure out, like, okay, what, what's going on? What filters have I applied? What filters do I need to apply? And then what tools do I need to create? And it's exactly. entertaining. The only time that is not entertaining is when you are in a hurry, when you have a deadline, and you have to oh, do yeah. some DAX. Then it's mm -hmm. not, not fun. because, yeah, you know, a DAX measure can take you like 30 seconds so it could take you a few yeah. days right, if you exactly. get completely stuck right but there's a lot of help on the power bi community mm -hmm. which i think is absolutely fantastic so i don't know it's just it's just do it but i don't think it I don't think DAX is easy at all. I don't think there's any DAX thing that is easy because it depends on what you're trying to do. Your DAX thing could break. Even a simple sum could break. So for example, if you are coming from Excel and you are summing two columns, you're going to get into trouble with the grand totals directly. Mm -hmm. That was the problem that I had at the beginning. It's like I'm summing column A with column B, not as a calculated column, but as a measure. And then you get the, grand, the wrong grand totals. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. So you start getting in trouble even if you're doing easy things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's definitely a challenge. So one of the things that if I ask the same question to myself, I would say 
theory has definitely helped in learning the the evaluation context, the filter context, run context, and also the context transition. Mm -hmm. It's very helpful. But to your point, if you if you just know theory and don't put it into practice, you're lost. So it has to be both theory first, in my opinion, and then practice, 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 which you just learn. And if it's if you if you get in different results, something unexpected, just start investigating even more. So why is this wrong? What is driving these results? I think that's a good approach, in my opinion. And don't give up. If you if, if you get this, the wrong results, you might get frustrated. Just take a break. Yeah. Yeah. Walk away from your computer and then come back in 15 minutes and see what's going on. Yeah, or the next day. Sometimes the next day, that's it too. You know, like you get like super. I've been stuck in DAX formulas, and then the next day, I just look at it and I know what I was doing wrong. Mm -hmm. Which is because you get so focused into what you're doing that you're not seeing. Maybe this was that you're missing a comma, mm -hmm. or you're putting the wrong column. Just it could be like silly things, but when you get so obfuscated, you're like, you just do something else mm -hmm. and come back the next day. <laughs> exactly exactly so that would be my recommendation yeah definitely or power bi community exactly good questions there as well and good solutions yeah 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 and there's always people willing to help and help comes also very very fast so i mean there's or any other community that you're on it doesn't have to be the power the community mm -hmm. any other community can work too yeah does larry on that one Okay, so let's check the other question. So the other question is, so what sources do you recommend to learn DAX? There is a lot of sources, so many yeah. questions. <laughs> yes. I think it depends. I know people hate when, you know, Everything depends, exactly. <laughs> but, but it truly depends on who you are as a learner. So I will recommend that you understand how do you learn best. Do you mm -hmm. learn best by reading books? Do you learn best by seeing other people doing it? Do you learn best by doing it yourself? So it's very difficult to say, okay, if you read the definitive guide to DAX, you, that's it, you're done. Mm -hmm. Probably not, because you're not going to understand. If you're a beginner, you will not understand anything, to be fair. You, you might read. I remember the first time I read it, you're like, oh, my God. I didn't language. feel very smart. No. <laughs> you're like, oh, my God. It's like a lot to learn. You realize that you have a lot to learn. I mean, that's how you should put it, not you know, get discouraged. But it's like, OK, there's a lot of things that I don't understand. There are a lot of things that need to be understood. Mm -hmm. but, but then how do you know what you don't understand and how to search resources for that? I guess is if, when you run into trouble. Mm -hmm. Then you start looking for solutions and then maybe you start understanding, oh, that's what's going on. Mm -hmm. It's hard. But there are a lot of great resources. Obviously, SQL BI, I mean, they are like the main DAX educators, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, what resources do you use? Do you have any particular that you always go back to? Yeah, I I do have a couple here, and the first one is uh, let's see. <coughs> I do use this book right here, the Gurus of DAX, Marco Russo and Alberto Ferrari. So there is a lot of content there, and you have to be prepared to to face that content. You need to have a little bit of background about DAX to understand the concepts. Sure. And also, if you buy the book, you will have you will get the examples as well. So you can practice. Just read the read the theory here on the website, and then you also can practice right away because there are examples there. So that's helpful. So that's one source that I use. This might be helpful for those folks there as well. And there is this one right here. You might know this one. Yeah. Tax Patterns, also by Marco Russo and Alberto Ferrari. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They Use have them. really, yeah, they have really mm -hmm. good examples there. 
how to create a calendar table, a really well structured calendar table, very helpful. I think you should create them in Power Query though. Or uh, yeah, that's also, that's also a good option, yeah. But if yeah. you need to, yeah, then definitely. Mm -hmm. Another one is the same from these two guys, SQLBI.com. They have really good content there as well. Yeah, definitely. I think they are probably, they probably know DAX better than people at Microsoft. <laughs> yeah, <see>. definitely. <laughs> And they, they have, it's funny that because they have, some people ask themselves, ask them, say, why don't you guys make this language a little bit easier? And then they say, well, we don't work for Microsoft. <laughs> we are just, you know, consultants. They say that? Yeah, yeah, I, I've heard a couple of times. <laughs> we, I don't work for, we don't work for Microsoft, but I understand your, your question. So yeah, those guys are really smart, so. That's yeah, a, for sure. That's definitely a good source, and they have they have a free course, an introduction there for DAX. It's highly recommended. It's just the basic, but it gives you a general idea about the language. Very helpful cool. if you guys gonna explore that. And then I also check your your YouTube channel, and you have something really cool called DAX Fridays. So I love that. <laughs> oh my god. So I know you have a lot of content about DAX and I don't know if you still have it. Do you still have every Friday something related to DAX? How does it no. work? No, no, no. I do it. So for example, I'm covering now the window functions. Mm -hmm. And when I do them, I put them under DAX Fridays, but it could be on a Monday or mm. a Tuesday. Okay. But it's under the DAX Fridays tag. Play. You know, the DAX Fridays is me exploring DAX functions, mm. right? So the SQL BI guys, they are more like academic rigorous on how they teach it. Mm -hmm. I'm more like, let's explore this and see how, what it does and what it doesn't that do and, you know, how it works. So if you go to the first videos I had, mm -hmm. I was learning DAX. Well, I'm still learning DAX, but I mean, I was really, really a beginner in DAX. Mm -hmm. when I will start doing them. So I think it's quite good for beginners because they probably have the same questions that I had. Mm -hmm. Even though the video is like five, six years old. But it still applies, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're probably having the same hurdles that I had back then. I, I feel that now I don't explain things as much as I did before because I don't realize that I should. But when you're mm -hmm. a beginner, you explain everything more. Mm -hmm. Because you are discovering yourself, you know, the, everything, how the filter works and how. Mm -hmm. So it's a different approach, but I, I think it helps a lot of people that, you know, just want to have a little more practical approach to DAX. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And when you are learning DAX and you feel really proud of it, proud of yourself because you're getting the right results and then you are ready to share this with, with your audience. So that's what happens to me. I say, oh man, I learned this. I need to share this with my with my audience. <laughs> I know how it works for you. But it's, it's yeah, definitely yeah. really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So everything I do is things that I've learned mm -hmm. most of the time recently. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, that's how it works. And let's see. And, and of course, there are really good YouTube channels as well that you guys can explore if you want to learn DAX. A guy in a cube is a good one. And also, if you haven't subscribed to the Microsoft YouTube channel, it's also really helpful. They have, you know, the monthly updates they, they publish there. And going back to the optimization of DAX, because, I mean, DAX is... It's a language, a programming language that started back in 20, 2010. You might remember this with, you know, Power Pivot. With Power Pivot. Yeah. And since then, I believe there has been a lot of changes and they are optimizing the language. And one of the, one of the topics that came to mind was the, the calculate function. Which you might remember. The calculate function. Calculate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you may remember that in order to have a filter, you have to have a table 
you know but then they change it to boolean how do you how do you say that in english boolean expressions i don't know and then that's an exactly yeah, like a true or false can look exactly so it was more it was more flexible so i guess my point is since this is a language that they are still improving so eventually it might get a little bit easier i know what yeah. your thoughts on that yeah 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 for sure i um i for what i hear and i think they have said this publicly you know, they are going to allow, for example, when you are doing financial reporting, you have like this mm -hmm. row by row, you know, you have to have um, expenses with in index of the revenue, right? And you have to have this row minus this row multiplied by that minus that, you know, it's like a, and that in Excel works very well. But mm -hmm. It's very hard to do it in, in uh, Power BI. So there are a lot of custom visuals that allow you to take in Power BI, you take this column minus this column, and then you create a new column virtually on the table. Mm -hmm. And I think they are going to allow for that to happen in, uh, you know, by default in Power BI without a custom visual. And I think that will make everything a lot easier. Exactly. That together when they evaluate and log that you can actually see the tables that are being created to do the calculation should do everything so much easier. Mm -hmm. And I think it probably should be released. I don't know when, but hopefully this year. So I'm hoping that they do that and it gets uh, easier to learn. Yes. Yeah. But we'll see. Ho hopefully we can see those changes soon. So Yeah. I think all these Windows functions, it looks like they are like precursors of being able to do row by row calculations, but I mm -hmm. don't know if it is true. Actually, how about this comment? Oh, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> Jordanos. Thank you very much for your comment. So cool, nice, I appreciate it. Yes, okay, awesome. All right, so let's move on to the next question here, and this is an interesting one. I don't know if you're familiar with ChatGPT, but this is oh, a, <laughs> this is a trend lately. <laughs> so can we use ChatGPT to write DAX code? Yeah. So you know, the, there is a um, measures. What is it? Quick measures that uh -huh. was released not so long ago that it was supposed to do, you know, you write language and then it becomes a DAX measure. There is GPT-3, not ChatGPT. ChatGPT-3, I think, is like GPT-3.5. So mm -hmm. It's a new version. So I tested on a video this ChatGPT-3, and uh -huh. it did poorly. <laughs> not very good at all. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I am guessing that at some point, Microsoft is going to put chat GPT in DAX, in Power BI, they haven't done it yet. Maybe they've tested and they find that it's still not very good. Mm -hmm. Not Don't know, like really, I'm speculating, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. But I guess they, at some point they will put it in there and then we can test it. But to have, you know, if you go to chat GPT website and ask for something and it gives you a DAX code, it doesn't get any better than going to the Power BI community and getting DAX code. Like, you need to have the model, you need to have the relationships, you need to have the language that or the terminology that is used in order for it to work, mm -hmm. right? So otherwise, it's just a Google search, like any Google search. But I think with ChatGPT, it's something that bothers me. And I had a oh, video about it, but I actually took it down because <laughs> I, it, it was not doing the right thing. But, you know, it, OpenAI has, is a close box. It doesn't open source what their AI does and how they do it. Mm -hmm. And there are people showing that it's actually getting work from other people that have a license to it that requires a quote that says, if you take my code, do it, but mm -hmm. say that it's from me. So there was this guy that was searching if there was a way to do what he had done in a piece of code, and mm -hmm. ChatGPT returned that, his code. Oh. 
And he said, oh, uh, you know, this is, where did you get that code? The guy asked to chat to uh -huh. And he wouldn't say, but he knew because, you know, the comments on the code, it was his comments. He, he uh -huh. was certain that it was his code. And he had this code on GitHub on a license that requires to name him as the source of the code. Uh -huh. So there are a lot of things that worried me about ChatGPT. It, it, it basically fabricates answers. Mm -hmm. So it, it creates answers that are not true. There was another case that somebody, it was a, a medical research that he was doing, or no, it was a bat research. And then he was an expert in that, you know, but who, who does research on bats, like four people. Mm -hmm. So ChatGPT mentioned two papers from reputable sources, like good mm -hmm. non sources. And mm -hmm. he was so surprised. He was like, I don't know these papers. <laughs> it's impossible. So he went and looked, and they don't exist. Huh. He made it up. ChatGPT made everything up. <laughs> and That's it's interesting. not okay. No, definitely from not, an ethical yeah. and moral standpoint, it's not OK. Yeah. So I'm not happy on how they are doing ChatGPT at yeah. all. You know, Google la launched now pressure about ChatGPT. Mm -hmm. But that is, you know, they're, they're the same thing. Uh -huh. And they lost a ton of money because it was saying that it was okay to drop batteries in the auction. Like, can I dispose? Well, somebody asked, like, it wasn't on their advertisement. Like, can I dispose car batteries in the ocean? And their chat GPT said yes. Yeah, that's, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting. It is wrong. Mm -hmm. I, I think we need to... Uh, we need to use tools that are responsible and they mm -hmm. are doing the correct thing, stealing from people's work and not saying anything is not okay in my book. Yeah, yeah. I guess they need to improve. They need to add the source there as well. For sure, but they yeah. don't. They don't. Mm -hmm. And exactly. the reason why they don't is because they are probably using, and you don't know because it's not open source. Mm -hmm. So all other... It, AI tools are open source, but theirs, mm -hmm. which makes you wonder what they are doing in the background. Yeah, it's an interesting, interesting thing, definitely. Yeah. yeah. But in terms of playing with the tool, have you played with the tool just for curiosity? I, for me, they have to open up and say what they are doing before I am going to give them my time. Because I think mm. it's irresponsible to use a tool that is not you know yeah, yeah yeah ethically correct okay yeah it's it's fair and but i think there is a, a paid version as well there is a free yes. version a paid version i know yes. how the paid version works but i give it a shot the 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 free version just for curiosity i ask a couple of questions it gives you some silly answers like you said it's not accurate at all but you have to ask, keep asking questions, follow up, follow up with, with another question. And then finally, it started giving you the, the close results. But in my, in my experience, you just need to have, a, you, need, you need to have the experience to start differentiating what is right and what is wrong. But yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, definitely. And is. not everybody is that careful, you know, so mm -hmm. if you're not that careful, you might wrong with whatever it Something gives you is completely wrong yeah mm -hmm. yeah there is definitely an opportunity there to to improve the yes the, that tool sure well that's good to know so thank you thank you for sharing <laughs> your experience yes there is a, a, a google has another one right it's called bart i believe yeah 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 that's the one that was saying that it was okay to throw <laughs> batteries in the ocean, <laughs> the ocean yes. silly silly answers so I, I think it's, but it's irresponsible that these big tech companies release those tools, you know, because it can be used. There's people that have been using it allegedly, I don't know if it's true, for, you know, malicious code and all kinds mm -hmm. of crap. So there, with power comes responsibility. And I think they are acting very responsibly right now, releasing something that is not really ready. But mm. time will tell. We'll see. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully they improve the, the tool. Okay, awesome, awesome. Let's see what else we have here. Uh, 
Uh, let's check the other question. I think that's the last question that we had. We have a few minutes for Q and A, so let's go over the the chat here. Let's see. We have here Claudio Suazo from Chile. Hola, hola. Hola, Claudio. Thanks for joining. And we have also Giordano's Adigo. Hello. Yeah. Ruth, you unlocked DAX for us. That's awesome. Cool. Mm -hmm. Beer one. Thank you for the shout out. Thanks. Power <laughs> yeah, <laughs> complex, especially with Power Query. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> How about that one? A There's a one. lot of truth in there. <laughs> yes. So we have here Mario from Venezuela. Thank you for joining. Hola, Mario. Dax is mysterious. I want to you to solve the mystery. <laughs> That's good. So there is also a suggestion here. Uh, yeah. You know, I think they are using you know, because DAX comes from Excel Power Pivot, I think they were mm -hmm. trying to mimic the functions in Excel. Mm -hmm. And then the ones that are coming up now, you know, the, the koalas, the, I call it the koala function, I still don't know how to pronounce it, the one that you can add a zero. So I think they come from SQL. So they are like mixing names to so people can actually recognize what they do. So if you come from the SQL world, some of the functions will already, you know, be known to you. Mm -hmm. And also if you come from um, Excel, so you will recognize some of the of the names. But I think it's a it's a little bit it's good, but it's also bad because they don't behave the same as in Excel. So you believe like I. I did that. In the beginning, I saw some and I said, oh, I know how some works. So no problem. Mm -hmm. But then you're like, this is not some. <laughs> this is something else. So you think that it's the same, but it's, it's, it's not. So mm -hmm. you have to, again, just dissociate from what you learn from Excel. Ch change your mindset for a second. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So Claudio says, if we can have a lab <laughs> session in Spanish next time. Yeah, we can discuss this sure. one already. Definitely. Yeah. We can have and, chat GPT to, <laughs> to live <Spanish>. translate. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Thank you, Claudio, for your suggestion. And then let's see. We have another one here. So, Ruth, what is the source of your learning for Python? Yeah, so I am I'm a very a very practical person when I learn. So I learn by doing, and I learn on a need to know basis. So I, I don't like to just get a book and learn something, or get a course and learn something because I get bored. But if I have something that I want to do, it keeps me motivated to do it. So I am creating, you know, the SQL mystery game, crime mystery game. It's a game that you need to solve using data, and it's an SQL database that you need to query. Mm -hmm. So I'm recreating it with Python. So by doing that, I'm learning Python, Pandas, NumPy, Matplotlib, SQL, but in a practical way. So mm -hmm. I have the project, and then I Google. Mm -hmm. So I'm a lot on the Stack Overflow. It's like, I guess, is the Power BI community of Python. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people there and a lot of answers to the questions that I have at least. And then, you know, there's like real Python and there's like geek for geeks, huge websites on Python that are very useful too. But I go there just on a need to know basis. Like, okay, mm -hmm. how do I filter a pandas data frame? And then I Google that and then I know how to do it and I move forward. Yeah, that's good. Good approach. Thank you, Susanta, for your question. And let's see. Uh, there's another one here. Uh, 
live projects. How live projects? How useful? Okay. What do you mean with live projects? Live projects, he says. I guess he's looking for real, real life examples. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -mm. The problem with that is to find, well, there's not. I mean, you can. Open source, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Or governmental data, for example. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure how useful that is on a, for companies to showcase. But I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely different. I mean, for examples, we usually use the just basic, you know, small tables to provide with guidance. But real life is different. You You deal with a lot of rows millions of rows so i understand your question yeah Kashiron yeah, yeah. Shella. thank yeah. you for asking. Mm -hmm. and let's see jorge medina says dax friday is la mejor lista de reproducción <laughs> thank you Muchas gracias. Uh, let's see let's see another one Jorge Medina says, in your channel statistics, what kind of videos are the most relevant? Those of Power BI, those of Power Query, Python. Good I've question. always been a big fan of the ones you have done with Power Query. So the biggest or the, the most viewed ones are the ones on DAX. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because it might, that's what I think, DAX is difficult. So people need help. Power Query is a lot easier. So you can do a lot by yourself. So you don't need to search help online that much. Same with Power BI. So definitely DAX. So DAX is my number one topic in the channel. But okay. I, I do enjoy Power Query a lot, so I love to have these like edge cases of Power Query. So probably that's what the ones that you've been mm -hmm. seeing. Yeah. So going back to Power Query for a second, if you said that it would be more based on your experience, if you create a day table or a common table with DAX and then with Power Query, which one do you find more versatile? more easy to manage oh in power query power query oh yeah yeah because if you want to edit something just transform data and then boom start editing right yeah yeah exactly you can do i mean power query and the axe is the same when creating calendars so you can do exactly the same things mm -hmm. but it gets rid of memory if you do it in power query in reality though, if you have it in the source even better but if you don't mm -hmm. power query DAX, I mean, it annoys me when people have calendars and DAX because you click on it and then, you know, the, the intelligence or the formula bar is like, boom, <laughs> because the calendars are always like 300 rows, like, oh. Yeah, exactly. And which row do I need to ch do to check something? In Power Query, you have the step names. Like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. This is where you put the day name. Oh, this is where you put that. So I prefer it in Power Query, but it doesn't mean that you cannot do it in DAX. Absolutely mm -hmm. not. There are some cases where you have to do it in DAX. So yeah, by default part query for sure. Totally agree. The steps are very helpful. And a good practice is also to name your steps, right? Because by default, it says step one, step two, step three. And then if you want to go back to see what, what's going on, so I didn't know what I did here. But if you name it, so you know exactly where to go. Exactly, or put comments at mm -hmm. the end. You know, you go to open the advanced mm -hmm. editor and then you, you comment everything in there so you know exactly what everything that you don't need to comment everything, you only need to comment things that are a little bit special or business rules. I am doing these because they always remove whatever they don't want to have see Sweden in their country data, whatever. So, yeah. You don't need to document everything, but definitely it's something that stands out should be documented. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Give me some advice in Power BI. I want to know what can solve encrypted data extract from SQL database into Power BI. In the past, I want to decrypt this data. Mm. Do you have any experience on that? Nope, okay. zero. No, no worries. My suggestion would be 
you can just decrypt the data in the data source. So you don't have to do it in Power BI. So you have to talk, if you don't have access to the data source, you have to talk to the IT guys in your company and then ask them, hey, do you mind decrypting this data? It might be a very sensitive information. That's why it's encrypted. Mm -hmm. But if it's, if it's, if there is a way to decrypt the data and you don't have the option, you have to ask those guys, the IT folks. They should be able to help you with that one. And then there is another question here, and I think this is the last one. Have you thought about writing a book with your experiences in business intelligence? Woo! How about <laughs> that one? Yeah, you know, book companies chase me like Ruth. <laughs> why don't you write a book on X, Y, Z? It's it's just too time consuming. Mm -hmm. to to write a book so i would have to stop doing youtube for example because you know my main so source of income is uh, consulting mm -hmm. so i it would be so hard to write mm -hmm. a book. and everything changes so fast you know so when you publish the book probably it's already old mm -hmm. <laughs> Change, Unless you do yeah. a book on, on DAX or you do a book on Power Query that they don't change that much. But if you do a book on Power BI, now they are telling that they are going to change the entire visual layer for next mm -hmm. year. So whatever book you create now, next year is out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it changes quickly. Know. Okay. All right. And then this is the last comment that we have here. Ruth almost used <laughs> me to Power BI, but definitely to DAX. Okay, cool. Uh, and then Juan says, uh, thank you, Juan, for for your kind words. Really? All right. So let's see, just to close this session real quick. All right. Educational platforms. Oh, I'm not on Twitter anymore. <laughs> Don't forget to follow. I'm a master. You're not on Twitter anymore, okay. So no, if you want to follow Ruth. Okay. So if you want to follow Ruth, that it is. There are the platforms. Ruth, anything else to add here? Yeah, I know. Okay, awesome. Website maybe, but it's the same. Corbal, Corbal, I mean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Awesome, awesome, awesome. Oh, I forgot I had an Instagram account. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's right there. <laughs> Final thoughts. Yes. There you go. Practice makes perfect. Yes. Do you agree with that one? Uh, absolutely. Maybe not perfect, but close to perfect. <laughs> That's perfect. 99.9%. .9%. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Definitely. Well, practice, practice, practice. That should be the mantra for DAX. Exactly, exactly. Or for I anything we, you want to learn. Yeah, I think we are on time. Thank you, Ruth, for your time. Thank something, you. Something else that you want to share with the audience? No, no, no. Just thank you. It was really nice to have a chat with you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I think we will see each other soon, hopefully. Mm, yeah, definitely. We should, we should work on the... Spanish version. Spanish version. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time, Ruth, again. And to the audience, you guys, you guys were awesome. Thank you for your comments, your questions. Very, very nice of you. And we will talk to you later. Yes. Thank you. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye. Uh,